The Adventures of the All Guardsmen Party. Dude, where's my psyker? This is the ongoing tale of a bunch of guardsmen who got drafted into the Inquisition after their regiment was reduced to a mere 37 men by a combination of orcs, heretics, more orcs, tyranids, and of course, their own leadership. Currently, they're working for an Inquisitor that is the 40k equivalent of Professor Oak. He provides teams and missions to interrogators who need to get some leadership experience before becoming full Inquisitors. The lot of these guardsmen is rather thankless. They're matched up with five other less combat-focused team members, assigned to an interrogator, and sent out to fight the enemies of the Imperium. Our story starts with Nubby and Twitch, vainly trying to open up the lock exit to the shuttle after being told that their new squad contained three psychers, in addition to an assassin, tech priest, and the interrogator himself. Sarge is screaming internally as he remembers that the last psychers he worked with accidentally summoned a bloodstorm and turned into a demon host the second they tried to do anything. Doc is captivated by the sight of a fat little man-child chewing on a seat's headrest. Heavy has decided that this is all above his pay grade and is making himself comfortable by lying across a row of seats. The interrogator explains that the team is on its way to find out why a planet has not been supplying psychers to the black ships. One of the psychers asks Sarge to stop screaming. It's making it hard to think. The All Guardsman Party and Dude Where's My Psyker. Current psychic phenomena count? Zero. Current pearls of the warp count? Zero. So no shit, there we were. Stuck in a small ship with three psychers, on our way to perform a top to bottom search of an entire planet. All for the sole purpose of finding more psychers. We did not have high hopes for this mission. Hell, some of us had serious concerns about whether we'd even still be seen when we got there. The journey itself wasn't so bad. Instead of being guests on a navy vessel, our interrogator actually had his own small ship. Sure, almost all the space was taken up by our interrogator's huge-ass cogitator array, but at least we didn't have any navy ratings trying to take our weapons away, or bitching at us for setting tripwire traps in the corridors. The problem was the people we had to make the journey with. We didn't like any of the psychers. One was a Samarmi tool, who spent far too much time talking and making himself look pretty. Then there was the Weasley creep. He constantly scanned everyone's thoughts and rattled to the boss. And finally there was this psychotic man-child who would occasionally throw telekinetic temper tantrums. We called them Face, Snitch and Nutjob, respectively. Compared to these guys, the snooty social assassin chick and the incredibly antisocial tech priest weren't that bad. The interrogator was infinitely worse. Our interrogator was a depth path and apparently some sort of data wizard. It took an entire ship just to carry all of his cogitators and he loved those machines like they were his children. Unfortunately, the bastard wasn't a complete shut-in. Instead of staying in the deck with his cogitators, he constantly held meetings and forced us all to attend. Not a day would go by without him calling us together to update everyone on what little clues he found, or check up on how we were preparing for the mission, or lecture us on proper inquisitorial behaviour. It was horrible. On our previous mission, we happily ignored everyone else on our team, while they happily did likewise. This time we had an interrogator who had never used a gun in anger, giving us unwanted advice about combat drill, kit loadout, regulatory compliance, and freaking etiquette. This was all done in a ton of smug benevolence. He understood that we were just dim-witted manual labourers and couldn't be blamed for not being as smart as he was. That's why it was his duty to do all the hard thinking for us. The cherry on top of this was Snitch, who would report that we were thinking to the boss. Every time those lectures filled us with murderous rage, the little weasel would go and tell on us. Then we'd get a second lecture on proper attitude towards authority. God Emperor, we hated him. Eventually we arrived at the planet, which had earned the Inquisition's attention by providing the black ships with nothing but pathetically weak psychers, completely unsuited for any use whatsoever. There were probably dogs out there with more psychic talent than the strongest psychers sent to the ships, but when the black ships had scanned the planet, there was no unsanctioned psychers running around, so they took the pathetic tithe and left. Now we were here to find out where all the psychers that should have been on the planet of this size had gone. The gist of all the little briefings we suffered through was that a disappearance on this scale meant that we were either dealing with corruption in the government, a massive cult, some kind of psyker-eating demon, or Eldar. This meant that, unless proven otherwise, we had to assume that everyone was in on it. So until the interrogator got some sort of evidence, we wouldn't have any outside support. The posh assassin chick and face did all the social legwork. 
they would circumspectly shake people down for information while we loomed in the background, or preferably down the street at a cheap diner. Apparently they were very good at it, since everyone aside from us thought they were absolutely delightful to be around. At the end of each day, they would transcribe everything they find and beam it up for the interrogator to process. The other information gathering team involved the tech priest and snitch, hanging around in the equivalent of an unmarked van. They spent all day driving around hacking wireless networks, scanning people's thoughts, and dumping all the information back to the boss in orbit. We got to drive the van and fetch snacks. We didn't all get to leave the ship. One or two of us were always stuck at base since it was apparently our job to babysit the nutjob psyker. It really was babysitting too, because we'd have to clean up the messes he made, get food for him, calm him down when he threw a fit, and entertain him when he got bored and started pulling rivets out of the walls with his brain. Poor Doc got that job more than anyone else. He just wasn't very good at saying no. Aside from that though, it was an improvement over the trip out there. We were occasionally able to get away from our teammates and whoever was backing up the social team got to visit some pretty high class parties. It was always a nice opportunity to snag some good food and, in Nubby's case, pocket the silverware. After a while, the interrogator called us together and informed us of his brilliant deductions and masterful analysis. These involved money trails, newfound political power, falsified ship manifests and other stuff we didn't really care about. It all boiled down to someone in the government is selling the psychers off planet. Once our interrogator was done explaining his genius, he had everyone but himself rebased to a few floors of apartments, located in one of the larger cities on the planet. After the team was settled in, he sent us out to take some long, hard looks at a bunch of the nearby banks. We enjoyed being away from him and his constant meetings, and quickly turned the building into a proper guard's barracks, which is to say that Twitch wired the place up with dozens of traps. Nubby started fencing stolen goods out of the garage, and the rest of us built a set of barricades between us and the outside world as well as between us and the rest of our damn team. It felt good to be home. Before long, word came down that the interrogator had identified the operations banker, and the whole ground team was sent off to get some answers out of him. So while Heavy hung out in the van with the socially unacceptable members of the team, and ignored the ugly little man prodding his brain and demanding candy, the rest of us infiltrated the bank. This is to say we put on suits, which succeeded in making us looking exactly like guardsmen in suits. A march <laughs> yeah. and marched behind face and the assassin into one of the planet's largest banks. There was a little bit of trouble getting through security, which was entirely our fault. All of us had kept our LAS rifles underneath our suits, and Twitch was still carrying a few debt packs. We weren't very good at disguises. Luckily, between face doing some psycher stuff and the tech priest's hack van messing with the security systems, we got in fine. After we were past security, Face and the assassin greased a few palms and screwed with a few minds. Before long, we all sat down to a nice discussion and tea time with the banker. Well, they sat. Us guardsmen stood around and looked ominous. Various falsified credentials were shown. Psychic tricks were used and a discreet uplink was attached to a cogitator. Then everyone left happy and healthy. We decided to exit via the back way so as not to trouble security again. And also because Nobby had wheeled out the tea trolley when we left. <laughs> <laughs> the boss and the rest were pretty excited about what was found in the banker's cogitator. The next few days were spent in relative peace while the interrogator worked with the rest of the team to map out a web of corruption and bribery. This lasted right up until Snitch called us one evening and said a large group of hitmen was moving through the empty floor below us. We were locked and loaded within seconds and started laying fire into the hitmen from multiple sides before they even hit the edge of the perimeter. We had good cover good firing lines, knowledge of local terrain, superior weaponry, much better training, and the element of surprise. It was a slaughter. The last three of them pinned down by Heavy and Twitch, while the rest of us flanked them when everything went dark. And horrific screaming started. When the lights returned, all the hitmen, dead or alive, had been reduced to chunky salsa and we could hear the nutcase giggling upstairs. This killed the mood. Everyone eyed the psyker nervously as we packed up our shit and got the hell out of there before the authorities showed up. We elected to exit via the garages in the cargo truck, while the rest of the team used the shuttle on the roof. None of us wanted to be anywhere near the psychers after that show. Also, Nubby and Twitch didn't want to leave anything behind. Psychic phenomena count, one. Perils of the warp count, zero. We rebased to another almost identical set of apartments and went about guardifying it again 
Except this time, Twitch was given free reign of the entire buffer floor instead of just the entrances and windows. Well, this meant that entering our base via the main entrance took about 15 minutes and carried a very real risk of grisly death. We knew that people were actively trying to kill us. Also, we didn't want to depend on anyone who turned bodies into chunky salsa and giggled about it for our perimeter security. The rest of the team started using air transport exclusively after the assassin nearly lost a hand when she didn't follow Twitch's entry instructions correctly. After a few days at her new base doing scan trips and otherwise laying low, Snitch found a young nascent psyker powerful enough to be worthwhile. So our team of elite inquisitorial agents started staking out a toddler. Our unmarked vans followed the kid day and night, from his hab to the daycare to the playground and everywhere else you might take a toddler. Imagine five heavily armed men, all clustered round a screen, watching a kid being pushed on a swing, while behind them an undeniably creepy bugger relays what everyone in the playground is currently thinking, and a psychotic man-child picks his nose and mutters to himself. Eventually our weird stakeout paid off. A bunch of suits showed up and grabbed the kid and his mother. Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. <laughs> so either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. <laughs> And, like, let's be serious, the models are pretty based looking, so, once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties! <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. So no shit, there we were. Five guardsmen and two psychers in the middle of a playground, chasing a bunch of G-men carrying a struggling woman and a small child. The woman and child were screaming. The G-men were calling for backup. Our psychers were yelling about one of the G-men being a blumpter. And while we all had our guns out, none of us wanted to open fire in the middle of a playground. We were gaining on them. Being a sprinter is a survival trait in any guardsman. But right as we reached them, one of them slapped a button on their chest and another one of them started to float into the air as the surrounding area was covered with frost. We all immediately slammed into an invisible wall and were scattered across the ground, while Snitch stopped and started muttering to himself and gesturing. None of us wanted to be in the middle of a psyker fight, so we flanked the invisible shield, left heavy to cover the enemy psyker, and resumed the chase. The G-men had gone to grind in a playscape and opened fire on us with small arms, but were having trouble because the child was apparently emitting random bursts of static electricity. We decided that survival was more important than civilian casualties, and returned fire from whatever cover we could find. And since we were damn good at our jobs, things went pretty poorly for the G-men. We kneeled most of them in the first few volleys, which convinced the last few of them to keep their heads down while we flanked them. Behind us, Heavy was laying stubber fire into the enemy psyker's shield, and Snitch was pressing him hard. Then, with a little pop, the enemy psyker disappeared. While Heavy and Snitch watched the spot where the psyker had been, we rushed the remaining G-men. Our interrogator was helpfully reminding us over the Vox that he wanted prisoners, so we charged in to beat the shit out of the last few survivors. Unfortunately, at this point, their backup arrived in the form of an unmarked government flyer which immediately began to lay down some serious suppressive fire. This was higher stakes than we were ready for, so we bugged the hell out, while the remaining G-men piled in with the kid and his mother. The flyer wasn't done with us though. As soon as its doors were closed, it lifted off and got ready to do a strafing run. We hit the dirt and dodged the first pass like true guardsmen, while behind us the enemy psyker had reappeared with another pop and the fight resumed. This time the fight was over in seconds. The nutjob had finally caught his fat ass up with us, and with a little slurp, the enemy psyker turned inside out. That done with, both the psykers and heavy turned their attention to the flyer, which decided it was time to cut its losses and got the hell out of there. As we got back up out of cover, the interrogator called us to tell us that the assassin of face had successfully targeted the flyer with a tracer, and the tech priest would shortly be picking us up to assault whatever facility it landed at. Psychic Phenomena Count 3 Perils of the Warp Count, 1. Apparently some minor detail about the G-Men or the Flyer finally gave the interrogator the evidence he needed to safely call in official support. After he was done bitching at us for not capturing anyone, or stopping the Flyer, or whatever else we did wrong, our interrogator told us a squad or two of our bites would be assisting us. 
Nobby was understandably nervous about being around what were normally law enforcement officers, and none of us were happy when the interrogator explained that he was only bringing in the Arbites because he thought we were incompetent. But overall, this news was well received by the guardsmen. More bodies between us and incoming fire is always welcome, doubly so if they had heavy armour and good fire discipline. The facility we landed at was large, grim, and obviously a shuttle port. Therefore, our job in this raid was to capture any available information about where the shuttles would be going. So while two squads of Arbites had fun clearing the place room by room with judicious use of shotguns and shock malls, we kept a secure perimeter around the rest of our team as they uplink cogitators and mind scan people. Aside from a few runners and idiots too dumb to surrender, we didn't have any excitement until one of the Arbite squads found the Psyker holding area. As the Arbites closed in, one of the G-men apparently decided that the situation was unsalvageable and released the psychers. Under the cover of a dozen physically gifted children freaking the hell out, they punched through the Arbite squad and headed right towards us, or more likely the flyer we were examining. We opened fire as the heavy-armed G-men entered the hangar and had them pinned in the hallway until Sarge and Heavy's cover got blown apart by a fireball. Once again, we find ourselves caught in a psyker duel. It was three on three, and this time, Nutjob wasn't curb stomping them. The fight seemed evenly matched. Our psychers stood there and grimaced a lot of occasionally manifested horrible smells or small earthquakes. Their psychers sat in cover and did likewise. We didn't have line of sight on any of them, and when we tried to toss in a grenade, they got slapped back at us halfway through its arc. We weren't exactly sure what to do, but after the fourth creepy occurrence, we decided it was time to use our initiative to end this shit before someone summoned a demon. Sarge appropriated a nearby forklift, drove it outside the hangar, and then we slapped a bunch of debt packs on it. We turned it towards the outside wall of the hallway the psychers were holed up in, put a brick on the pedal and blew the entire hallway into rubble before anyone noticed what was going on. It surprised the hell out of us when the dust cleared and two of the psychers were still there, hiding under a shield. But it didn't last long after that. With a hellish bang, one of the psychers shot into the air and splattered against the shield, and the last psyker immediately turned inside out. We could hear Nutjob giggling back in the hangar. Psychic phenomena count, eight. Pearls of the warp count, two. That was the last of the resistance. We poked through the military hardware that was left behind while the rest of our team did inquisitorial stuff to the surviving G-men and their cogitators. After they were finished, we packed up our loot and headed back to base to rest and rearm while the interrogator played with all the data we got for him. We were sure that before long, he'd know which processing facility the psychers had been sent from, and were told to get ready to launch another assault as soon as he had a target. Being guardsmen, we knew that the best way to prepare for an assault is to eat a good meal and catch as much sleep as possible. So as soon as our kits were prepped, we all hit the sack while the rest of the team watched the perimeter. This meant that we were all in a deep sleep, with the exception of Twitch, who merely dozed with his lasgun pointed at the door and the safety off. When a second assassination team got through our perimeter, the enemy must have seen the remains of the last team and decided that the psychers were their primary threat, because this team had at least one untouchable with it. Unfortunately for them, untouchables don't do anything to stop booby traps. The whole team had slowly cleared a small path across the floor, that twitch had trapped, and reached the big expensive security door that led to our makeshift barracks. They formed up behind the best infiltrator and got ready to storm the place, as soon as he hacked the door controls. Then the door opened, and they had exactly 0.25 seconds to express surprise that anyone would tape several short fuse grenades to the inside of a top of the line security door. This woke us all up, and Twitch being Twitch, he put an entire clip and two frags into the open doorway before anyone else was upright. He probably didn't hit anyone, since the six grenades taped to the inside of the security door had vaporised everyone near it, but he sure as hell convinced their rear guard to start falling back. Not that it did them any good. Before the rest of us were on our feet, Twitch hit the remote detonator for every single mine he'd placed below us. The entire buffer floor was blown to shrapnel, taking the rest of the assassination team with it, and setting off alarms up and down the entire block. Luckily the building was non-flammable and sturdily built. So aside from a very rude awakening, no one we really cared about was hurt. Sarge decided that nap time was over, so we kitted up and waited for the word from our interrogator. Before long it came, he pinpointed a rogue trader that was receiving the psychers and carrying them to off-world slave market. A joint naval and arbite force would meet us in orbit, 
and we were aboard the trader before they made their escape. Our primary objective was to capture the senior crew members and find their contact within the local government. Secondary objective included retrieving any psychers currently on the ship, capturing the navigational and financial logs, and not blowing up the ship like you blew up our base. Are all guardsmen this incompetent? So no ship, there we were, on a naval boarding shuttle, on our way to capture a rogue traitor and his retinue from a ship filled with captive psychers. We were not exactly enthusiastic about our odds of survival. Rogue traders have a reputation for being, or at least employing, very scary people. Plus an entire ship of untrained ones was a terrifying thought. Ours were bad enough alone. Still, we were guardsmen. Facing certain death for unappreciative superiors is what being a guardsman is all about. None of us really enjoyed the shuttle trip. The pilot was clearly terrified and the invasive manoeuvres made us all nauseous. We half expected to be blown out of space before we even got to the ship. But we landed on the hull without incident and cut our way into the interior. While we did this, several other navy and arbite shuttles were doing likewise. This was not a subtle attack. So it was hardly surprising that before we got 10 feet in, the ship's alarms started going off. We knew our business though, and mowed down all the opposition before they got a shot off on us. The assault was going well for all of the teams. We seized the engines and main batteries. The main hangars were on the verge of surrender, and the tech priest was pretty sure he'd located the bridge. Seizing the initiative, he remotely hacked all of the entrances to lock open so they couldn't be shut against us. Unfortunately, those turned out to actually be the doors to the Psyker's isolation cells. The second he opened them, everything went to hell. Literally. Ghostly images filled the air. The frescoes on the walls started weeping blood. Unearthly screaming came from every direction, and a stench that even put Nubby's lack of hygiene to shame emanated from the air vents. Our Psykers moved forward to try and sort things out before the entire ship got sucked into the warp or something. But we wanted nothing to do with the section of the ship filled with supernatural darkness and constantly fluctuating gravity. We still had a mission though, and since the psychic activity was blocking Vox communications, Sarge took operational command. We needed to get to the bridge, which the rather embarrassed tech priest assured us was definitely just a little farther past the psyker holding area. Once there we needed to find the rogue traitor, subdue him, and hit him until he rattled on his buddies. The problem was that even though there were other passages to the bridge that didn't go through the psyker cells, the psychic spillover had turned that entire section of the ship into no man's land. Just walking in there would be suicide, but Sarge figured that there was a safe way to cross the hellscape if only we could find the right people. Sarge was pretty sure that any ship carrying a bunch of unhappy psychers would have at least one untouchable on board, just in case something like this happened. All we needed to do was find out where they were and convince them to take a walk with us. So we had our tech priest do a quick scan to find out if any areas nearby weren't experiencing paranormal activity, then went to go and knock on some doors. Sure enough, we found two untouchables hanging out in a cabin, speculating on what all the fuss was about. One of them tried to make a fight of it and got shot for his trouble, but the other understood that in times like this, all men need to come together and serve the Emperor so we cocooned him in duct tape, threw him over heavy shoulder and set off for the bridge. The walk was really quite pleasant, as long as you ignored the dents, stains and puddles, and complete absence of any living creature. We waltzed right up to the bridge, without any opposition, and found it locked down tighter than a sorority's convent, when the guard was in town on leave. While the locked doors might have posed a problem for some of the other boarding groups, Nobby had helpfully attained several of the cutting tools that the shuttle crew had used to open up the outer hull. So with the tech priest's help, we found a section of the wall which was much thinner than the blast door and started cutting our way in. Sadly, even with the breaching charge to help with the final step, a last cutter is not quick or subtle. All we find in the bridge, after we flashbanged the shit out of it and stormed in, was a bunch of empty seats and a locked door labelled escape pod. We used the ship's vox to contact the boss and explain the situation. After he was done bitching at us, especially the poor tech priest, he decided that given our lack of successes, he would track the traitor's escape pod instead of just blowing it out of the sky. We were to go get our damn psychers back and get ready to raid wherever the traitor finally went to ground. So with our duct tape untouchable in tow, we went back to the psychic no man's land and started sorting shit out. The DTU really trivialised everything. It was just a matter of waking up to the psychers, having Doc trank them, 
then tossing them on the pallet Heavy was pushing. Occasionally we'd run into a minor demon, or crazed crew member, or obvious demon host. But between the DUT and a liberal dose of Lazfire, nothing posed a real threat. We eventually collected all the surviving psychers. A few of them were inside out. Freaking nutjob. job. And found our three psychers a little worse for wear, but ready to go after the rogue trader as soon as we knew where he was going. Psychic phenomena count, 23. Perils of the warp count, 5. The pallet full of sedated psychers was turned over to the Arbites along with the DTU. We were sad to see him go. He was like a big sticky teddy bear that kept us all safe and happy. But he had to stay with the psychers, so we handed him over to the Arbites and headed for the shuttle. The interrogator voxed us with directions to pick up the assassin. He had spent the whole mission getting her nails done or something, and report to an Arbite precinct near some big government mansion. Our interrogator had used his incredible skills and brilliant mind to track the rogue trader here, and oh so cleverly pinned secretary such and such as the mastermind of this whole mess. Our job was to quietly go in and capture the secretary and the rogue trader, so they could be used by the Inquisition to sort all this out without causing a massive scandal or minor war. So while the Arbites put up a very discreet perimeter, and the tech priests worked with some local engine seers to quietly shut down the mansion's communications. The rest of our team planned our infiltration. By this point, Sarge was done with everyone's shit, and vetoed several complex ruse suggestions by the assassin of face. Eventually they just gave up and the team was disguised as a group of heavily armed guardsmen and some dangerously unstable psychers. These weren't exactly the best disguises, but we felt pretty sure that everyone could act their part grumbling about obstinate guardsmen and stupid plans. The rest of the team dressed themselves up as officers and good old-fashioned sanctioned psychers. For our part, we tracked on the insignia of a local regiment and caught some sleep while the rest got their costumes in order. When everyone was dressed up, we walked right through the mansion security, pretending to be a local general dropping off some extra protection for his good friend the secretary. The poor sod was out of his mind with panic. He was calling in every favour he had to fortify his mansion and we fit right in with all the others. Our credentials weren't even checked. As soon as we claimed to be reinforcements, we were waved past security and led inside. He even invited the general up to his office to personally thank him for his generosity. We walked right into the secretary's office and presented ourselves to him while the rogue trader stood behind him and stared at us, boggle-eyed. Nothing good can last forever though, and after a few seconds of speechlessness, the rogue trader called the secretary a bloody idiot and an open fire. The rogue trader was a little late though. By the time he drew his weapon, the assassin had grabbed the secretary and we had already killed several bodyguards. We signalled the Arbites to move in, grabbed some cover and started a two-way firefight between the trader and security reinforcements. We had him well pinned and started to flank him when the far door burst open and the trader's retinue entered the fight. Two of them were already glowing. Once again we found ourselves stuck in the middle of a damn psyker duel. Meanwhile, the Arbites moved in to detain everyone, and without direct orders from the secretary, none of the security forces felt inclined to argue with the Arbites APCs. Back inside, Heavy was mowing down reinforcements with a stubber. Twitch was nailing anyone he left cover, and the rest of us were steadily advancing on the traitor and his psychers. Surprisingly, the two enemy psychers were holding off all three of ours, and aside from a few phenomena, neither side appeared to actually be doing anything. Eventually our slow advances got us a good shot on the traitor and his retinue, pushing the psychers to try something desperate. Face collapsed, but one of the traitor's psychers burst into flame, taking a pair of retainers with him. In response, Nutjob and Snitch doubled down in the last psyker, until suddenly Nutjob fell to the ground screaming, and one of the last retainers did likewise. Suddenly, the retainer got to his feet and tackled the last enemy psyker to the ground, and started beating the shit out of him while giggling. While we all watched this, Nutjob got to his feet, drew his side arm and shot Heavy in the back of the head. A second shot was fired at Twitch, but a quick dodge saved him. Unfortunately, the second he stopped covering the traitor, a round hit him in the back. While this happened, Sarge and Nubby downed the last retainer and the traitor disappeared with a loud crack. Immediately afterwards, the enemy psyker stopped moving, Doc ran towards Twitch and Heavy and both possessed retainer, and Nutjob collapsed again. While Doc started patching up Twitch, Snitch collapsed in exhaustion, and Nubby headshotted the psyker and the retainer that had been attacking him. Sarge scanned the room for the traitor, 
and with a tired giggle, Nutjob began to sit up immediately. The injured twitch drew his sidearm and emptied an entire clip into the little bastard. No one commented on this. Sergeant Nubby slowly approached the door to the bathroom attached to the office. Red as they reached it, a voice from inside announced, and put myself and my ship at their disposal in this current investigation. Both Sarge and Nubby ignored this and started prepping a breaching charge. Before they finished, they heard the assassin, who had been hiding with the secretary behind a filing cabinet, calm the interrogator and tell him that the target had been captured and the traitor was surrendering. The interrogator ordered Sarge to accept the gentleman's surrender and escort him to the shuttle. With a weary sigh, Sarge removed the charge and relayed the message. After a few seconds, the rogue trader opened the door and smugly declared, I knew we could work together. This was such a tragic misunderstanding. Whereupon Nubby yelled, He's got a gun! <laughs> and Sarge blew his head off. The interrogator was not happy. That was the end of our part of the investigation. Doc got Twitch stable and patched everyone else up, while Sarge collected Heavy's body and Nubby loaded the corpses. It was sort of awkward, sitting there, waiting for the all clear from their arbites. The secretary was moaning and crying in a very annoying way, and the rest of the team kept shooting us death glares while they struggled to restrain him. We offered to help, but they refused us for some reason. The mood was not improved by Nubby making some truly horrific noises as he tried to pry something out of the traitor's corpse. In the end, he had to borrow Doc's bone saw. Eventually the Arbites finished clearing the mansion, and a team escorted us back to their precinct. A flyer came and picked up the secretary along with the assassin, Snitch and Face, and hauled them off to some secure facility somewhere. We weren't told anything. We were definitely on the interrogator's shit list. Final psychic phenomena count, 28. Final perils of the warp count, 7. We hung out with the Arbites for a few hours, and they were nice enough to give us some food and help sew Twitch up while we waited. After a while, a shuttle came for us, as well as, to our surprise, the tech priest. It took us to the interrogator ship. The ride up was pretty somber. Heavy was dead. Both his and Nutjob's corpses were in the hold, and we knew the interrogator was furious with us. Not even Nubby's jokes about the selling price of second-hand gold teeth or his reenactment of the rogue trader's death could cheer us up. When we got back to the ship, we were treated to a long lecture about how our incompetence had ruined the interrogator's carefully laid plans. We were told how Sarge's disobedience had removed a vitally useful source of information, how our poor decision making had killed a valuable teammate, and how the tech priest's mistake on the ship had jeopardised the entire mission. He also made several remarks about our general behaviour, attitude, hygiene and education, then finally pointed out that if only we had acted as professionally as the rest of the team, Heavy would still be alive. If the bastard didn't have remote control of the ship's security servitors, Sarge would have probably killed him. In the end, we were ordered to pack up and return to the shuttle. We would be returning to Oak Ship on a naval transport, while the investigation was finished with the aid of the Arbites and local Admech. A secured data slate containing a summary of the investigation so far, as well as a detailed critique of our performance, was sent along with us. It came with a dire warning that Oak would be expecting the slate, and any attempt to accidentally lose it would go poorly. So we packed up our gear and heavy and boarded our shuttle. However, as a final afterthought, we propped Notjob's corpse upright in the bathroom, where it would hopefully scare the shit out of that damned interrogator. <laughs> the trip back was a lot better than the trip out. None of the Navy boys bothered us, and we bonded with the tech priest over our mutual hatred of that bastard interrogator. So aside from Sarge's usual drills, we mostly just lounged around and came up with ideas for how to change the report after the tech priest finished hacking the secure data slate. Very few pieces of technology can resist a tech priest with a month of travelling time in his hands. Before the trip was even half done, he had it cracked open and ready for a little judicious editing. There was a strong sentiment to wipe the whole thing and replace it with a picture of a butt and a note that said, blah blah blah, I'm a gigantic tool, blah blah blah, but cooler heads prevailed. We simply removed all negative references to ourselves from the report and rewrote the disciplinary note to simply say that we were no longer needed and were being released back to Oak. As an afterthought, we went through the entire report and dialed the interrogator's self-praise up to 11. We hoped it would help him come off as a complete tool to anyone who read the report. Eventually, we arrived back at Professor Oak's giant space-firing inquisitorial school. 
which was currently orbiting some random agri world. We dropped off the data slate, got debriefed, and went to go find our fellow guardsmen. Sure enough, there were a few of them holding down the little section of the ship that we had claimed back when we arrived. We got together, shared some stories, and planned a suitable funeral for Heavy. We called up the tech priest and found our other cogbro still hanging out in engineering, so we invited them both down to the planet with us. Then we got Heavy out of storage, requisitioned the shuttle, and headed down to the Agri world to give him a proper send-off. In the morning, the Cogbros helpfully hauled all of our hungover asses back to the shuttle and got us back aboard before anyone noticed we had left. That done with, we settled in for a few well-deserved weeks of R&R. On some days, a squad would come back with tales of success or failure and occasionally missing a few men. On other days, a runner would come down and a squad would head out or a new one would be pieced together. Eventually, the squad's R&R time ran out. So we packed our bags and waited for the runner to come for us. The runner didn't come though. Instead, one day as we lounged in our makeshift barracks, a tall man ducked into the room. He wore dress greens and positively reeked of officer. In a chipper voice, he greeted us and invited our squad and that strapping young fellow with the sword to join him on a little expedition. He said he was going into a combat zone and thought we'd enjoy a chance to get back into action and solve a few little military problems that are right up our alley. What what? So with a weary sigh, we gathered up the one man in the regiment dumb enough to prefer a sword over a good old fashioned lads gun and followed our new interrogator into the shuttle. 